Hello, Pastor Brian here. Uh, you know, I've been rather busy being the interim pastor at Hope Church in Wilton, Connecticut, and, but that's wrapping up now, and I'm, and, and I'm happy to be getting back to being able to do some of these little podcasts that I like to do. We're at a time of year now where we're kind of looking ahead to the Passion Week, you know, the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord. And, uh, and with that in mind, it reminds me what Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 2. Uh, he said there, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. In Him crucified. There, I think, was the very ultimate expression of God's love for us. You know John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, what? That He gave His only begotten Son. Gave Him to what? Unto crucifixion. Uh, I like what, uh, Rome, what Paul says in Romans 5, 8, where it, he says, um, And God demonstrated His love for us, in that while we, we were yet sinners, while we were everything, uh, that was a personification of the that which was abominable to God. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, there, there, he demonstrated, I think, most fully and completely that love right there at the cross. I've heard it said, you know, people uh, asking you, how much do you love us? And he stretched out his arms and he said, this much. You know, um, I know God's desire is that we would understand just how much He truly loves us. You know, Paul prayed to, for the Christians in Ephesians chapter 3, and, and in that prayer, he said this uh, at verse 17, he prayed that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, and that's, that's His love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and, and, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge. Oh, that he, we would understand just the wonder and the depth of that love. I think we get a glimpse, you might say, of that width and length and and depth and height in what came out of Jesus's mouth as he hung on the cross. You know, he was agonizing on that cross for about six hours, which the sin of the world was laid upon him. And during that time, we have recorded in scripture seven utterances that came out of his mouth. I like that, seven of them. You know, in the Bible, seven is the number of, of completeness, of, of just perfection. In other words, this was just perfect. And uh, I would like to uh, kind of take a look at those utterances as we look forward to that Passion Week, those utterances kind of one at a time. We, we, we read the first one in the Gospel of Luke. And it comes in, in chapter, um, chapter 23, verse 33 to 34, goes like this, 33 and 34. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. First words out of his mouth, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. It, it was an expression of forgiveness to those who were perpetrating the most heinous crime in history and on him personally. Here they had been abusing him with a, like a sadistic delight. They had 
he had been flogged, you know, mercilessly flogged and then beaten mercilessly. mercilessly. Then they took, a, a, made, made a crown of thorns and just impressed it into his skull. And they mocked him, made fun of him. And then ultimately and finally, they, they crucified him on that cross. Probably one of the most painful ways man has ever devised to put another man to death. And the first thing out of his mouth is asking his father for, to forgive them for doing that. You know what that means? That means at the final judgment, no one will actually be judged for having actually taken part and, 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 and done the crucifixion itself. Oh, uh, those who were involved will have to stand before him if, if they didn't get saved by faith in him, will have to stand before God in that final judgment for the rest of their life. But no one will be judged for the act of committing the crucifixion. You know, when it comes to acts of sin, I can't think of anything worse than that, anything more heinous than that. And there is the forgiveness of God right there. You know what I see in that? I see, you might say, the breadth of his forgiveness, how far reaching it is. Oh, I've heard people say over the years, I don't see how God can forgive me. Uh, I just, I, 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 I just have done so much. I, I've been so bad. You just don't understand, Pastor Brian. And, 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 and I think, I think I'm, I'm beyond any forgiveness. And the point is, that's just, that's just a lie. There's nothing so bad that the, that the forgiveness of God can't reach in there and and, and bring, bring forgiveness and bring cleansing and bring healing. You know, it's all, it's all available. I, I remember hearing the testimony of a fellow named Charles, known as Tex Watson. He was in that, that uh, infamous Manson gang that mercilessly uh, killed people on a crime spree in 1968. And they, caught, they caught him, the guys and gals that were involved. And they were, uh, they were, they were sentenced uh, first to death for first degree murder, but eventually it was commuted to life in sentence because uh, uh, the death penalty was, uh, had been removed from California at that time. And, uh, and Tex Watson uh, shared his testimony how uh, there at the chapel services uh, in prison. He had been raised in a Christian home. And, uh, and he just uh, saw the great need and he, he, he surrendered his life completely to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said uh, he, the burden was so lifted and he never ever felt a peace in his heart and a joy that he felt when he just totally gave his life to Jesus Christ. And he wasn't excusing any crime he had committed, but he knew that, that, that God had extended forgiveness and there was, a, there was a freedom and a cleansing and a healing in his heart that took place. He went on and studied the scripture uh, deeply and eventually uh, uh, got, got a seminary degree right there in prison and even was ordained as a pastor uh, at serving the Lord in the prison. Uh, you know, Tex Watson is actually my age and he's still in prison serving the Lord there. But that's, that's what God can do. The point is, there's no sin so heinous that it can't be forgiven by God. And, and that soul restored to him and, uh, and healed and cleansed and given the gift of eternal life. Now, I know there's in scripture, well, what about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? That Jesus said, there's no forgiveness for the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. How do you know that you haven't blasphemed the Holy Spirit? And the point about that is, is ultimately and finally, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is the rejection of his offer 
for forgiveness. The ultimate and final and complete rejection of that. That's the only way that you cannot ultimately be saved. So the cross right off the bat is about forgiveness, purchasing our forgiveness right there on the cross. I like the way uh, John puts it in 1 John chapter, chapter 4, verse 10, when he says, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins all of our sins. That word propitiation, what a rich word. It means complete and total satisfaction. Completely taken care of. Past, present, and future, all of it taken care of. You know, uh, the Bible says God removes our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. That he, he buries it in the deepest sea, never to be remembered again. You know, it blesses my heart to realize there's something God can't remember. There's something God forgets completely. And that's our sin. When it's been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ there at Calvary. And so there was Jesus hung on the cross. First words out of his mouth, Father, forgive them. Forgive these guys that are doing this. They don't know what they're doing. And so the forgiveness was extended right from there. And forgiveness has been extended from that crossed through the ages to all who will simply in the name of Jesus and faith in him just receive it in your heart because it's the only cure there is for that old sin issue in all of us that 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 living death in all of us and that is all through scripture that's a hallelujah you know I like with that in mind, I like First John uh, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, just talking about us now. It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Yeah, yeah, I stumble, I fall. We all do, don't we? That, that propensity toward doing that is still there. But then the next verse, verse 9, here it is. If we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just, righteous, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I like that. It's like you just come to him and say, oh, you confess it. And, and forgiveness is there immediately because of what Jesus accomplished at the cross. And you don't have to go digging for the deep lost sin that may be hindering because he says at that point he cleanses us from all unrighteousness, cleans the slate. And you know what I like about that verse? He says he is faithful to do that. That means he'll always do it. There'll never be a time when he says, oh no, no, you just crossed the line. That is one too many and we're done. He'll never say that. He is faithful at your confession anytime to, to bring that, extend that forgiveness immediately in cleansing. And it says he is just in doing that. I'll tell you why it's the just, it's the righteous thing to do. Why that's the application of true justice. Because Jesus justified us at Calvary, paid for that sin, all of them. And it, God would be unjust not to forgive you if you come in his name, the name of Jesus, in just an open honesty before the Lord. You know, that reminds me of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, where we're told, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, by your faith in him, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'd like to look at it this way, just because of Jesus and our faith in him. Uh, right now, today, is the very first day of the rest of your life. I don't know how you're doing spiritually. I hope you're living in the joy and peace of that forgiveness 
and and just walking with him and trusting in him with your life. But if there's been a struggle along that line, if you found yourself, man, just falling into some pit somewhere, you know, you can turn to him in honest confession and uh, and receive right now that complete forgiveness and 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 that complete cleansing. And it's like a fresh start right this moment, walking with Jesus. All the old's passed away. It's all new. What a wonderful way to live your life, new in Christ every single day. So I just want to, I just want to encourage you in that, and uh, and thank the Lord for His wonderful forgiveness that has been so freely extended through Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross for all of us. Hey, with that in mind, Christian, have a great day. And I'll talk to you later. God bless.